But now it is time for contestant number two. Anna is a material scientist and engineer in the final year of her PhD at UCL. Please put your hands together for Anna Porshaisky. <laughs> It's the summer of 2011. The London riots are in full swing. The final Harry Potter movie has just come out and Cher Lloyd is number one. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I am sitting in the back of a Chevrolet 4x4 pickup truck, squashed in between five very sweaty Scottish car mechanics in the middle of the sweltering Utah desert. We are trying to break the land speed record. We're here on the salt flats, and the reason we're in this car is the fact that we are trying to will the tiny, tiny green speck on the horizon to go faster, because we're trying to break a land speed record. Now, my role on this team is chief materials engineer. This means that whenever any of the engines break, which is all the time, it's my job to find out why. Now, um, on the first day, our driver, Rick, is going at like 250 miles an hour, and he hears a bang from the engine. He steers it to the side, and we take the car back to the pits to open it up and see what had happened. Now, as a materials engineer, I'm sort of like, um, sort of like a, forensic, a forensic pathologist but for dead cars instead of dead people. And I've seen my fair share of fractured materials, but this particular engine post-mortem was particularly graphic. The gearbox was completely shredded, all right? It was just reduced to <coughs> glitter floating in engine oil. But out of this, I pick up two gear cogs which had come out whole. Now, I turn these over in my hand, and the first thing that I notice is that one of them has a sort of dull, mottled um, fracture surface, which is where it had originally attached to the main cogwheel. Now, I know immediately that this has undergone ductile fracture. Ductile fracture is like what happens when you break a Snickers bar. The material bends and flows before it breaks. But this was the weird thing. The second gear cog had a shiny, flat fracture surface. WTF, <laughs> I said to myself. How can these two cogs made of exactly the same material have broken off in such different ways? Well, the answer lies with the speed at which they broke off, because if you take a Snickers bar, chocolate has got a lot smaller, hasn't it, recently? <laughs> if you take a Snickers bar, and you break it fast enough, the molecules in it don't have time to, to bend around each other and to flow over each other. And so the material just snaps. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, judges, you have two minutes to question Anna, if you wish. Was the trip to Utah, was, was it a part of your research? Um, no, I did this as an undergrad, um, and this has got absolutely nothing to do with the <laughs> research that I've actually gone on to do. Um, I work on hydrogen storage composites. Um, so I work on how you can store hydrogen, which is usually a gas, um, into a solid material, um, and that's for portable applications. So that's like um, for cars or for drones or even personal devices like phones and laptops. Um, and the benefit of this is that Hydrogen is usually a gas, um, and so to store it in a gas cylinder, that's quite a good way to store it, but these gas cylinders are quite big and bulky. So the materials that I work with store hydrogen in much smaller volume, um, and that has all sorts of benefits. Do you find your topic particularly difficult to talk about, or, or do you, do, because of the real-world context, do you find it? 
my research topic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the first ever sort of public engagement thing I did was talking about my research topic. Um, I spoke about hydrogen storage and online dating. Um, <laughs> That's really the only funny thing that I can find about <laughs> hydrogen storage. Um, actually, speaking of online dating, um, these, are two, these two are the actual gear cogs that came out of the car. And um, you can have a little look at those. Uh, I actually take these sometimes on first dates, to, um, just in case there's any like, lapse in conversation. <laughs> Don't you so snap, weird that I'm still single. <laughs> I would have thought so your, <laughs> surely your snap snickers trick is quite a good... More impressive. I feel quite tempted to snap a snicker. I've got now. some. Do you want? Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. we'll do that afterwards. Okay. Actually. But uh, one thing I want to ask you though: are you anything to do with the blood? Is this the Bloodhound no. Land Speed Race? So the Bloodhound does race at the Bonneville Speed Races in Utah. Um, but they're going for the overall land speed record. Our particular vehicle category was a one litre motorbike engine uh -huh. streamliner car. So the driver sort of sits in it, like lying down. Um, and that was our particular category. Um, during that week, we unfortunately didn't get the land speed record for that. And it actually hasn't been beaten since. So then it was at 313 miles an hour and it still stands there. We got like 270, which is not bad, but then the engines kept breaking, so. So, so just quickly, these both these teeth are off the same cog that we think so. Itself. Yes. So why is it that one of them fractured ductilely, and the other the other word which I've forgotten, but it sounded quite techy. Brittle. Brittle. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it, how is it two Snickers bars on the same cog? Right. In very very different ways. Excellent question. Uh -oh. So we Thank think you. what happened. Last <laughs> <Pass> one, Mark. <laughs> We think what happened is that the first cog, which came off with ductile fracture, the, the sort of gentle, slow one, um, that probably came off first. Um, it then whipped around inside the, um, the, the gearbox um, and then slammed into that other one, and so it shattered it with much greater force and much quicker. Um, obviously, most of our cars don't have this problem, um, so why did it happen? Well, I said that it was a one-litre motorbike engine. These engines are not designed to... Um, withstand these sorts of forces and withstand these sorts of loads. Um, so what probably happened was, if you look on, on the edges of those, they're black. And all gear cogs tend to be case-hardened. And that means um, the, the steel material has had carbon infiltrated into it. Um, steel doesn't really like to have carbon infiltrated into it, but the effect of it is that the case is much harder. Um, but what can happen is this carbon over time because it prefers to be next to itself in the structure rather than next to an iron atom, um, what happens is it tends to clump together, and these clumps can then form a source of, um, of stress in the structure, which is where some cracks can start to form. So probably what happened is the carbon had lumped up over time, and that formed a crack, which then busted the gear. That is your two minutes up, I'm afraid, so we're going to have to move on to the next contestant. Uh, give a big round of applause to Anna Porcelski. So we don't give a contestant extra time. Absolutely.